Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rhythmic. Berto with your host. Thank you so kindly being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Welcome aboard. Michael Rudman is in the house. As well, we have AVQ Eric Hayes. Bruce Pollard says, where does the First Amendment stop? Melanie Keelan is in the house once again. Melanie, great to see you again. uh, Let's see. We missed you on Ask Egberto Anything. We had a great Ask Egberto Anything. Ironically, we had equal numbers of conservatives and 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 uh progressives three to three we only had six people i wish we had a lot more but you know six people that was great that was excellent anyhow what else have we got here uh michael says egberto i missed an important one from last week ap uh says that uh texas man ticketed for feeding the homeless outside houston library is found not guilty. A man has been found not guilty of breaking a law against feeding homeless people outside of public library in Houston, concluding the first trial to be held after dozens of tickets were issued against volunteers for the group Food Not Bombs. Friday's verdict in the sprawling Texas city is the latest flashpoint in the debate. Many American cities offer uh, whether feeding the homeless is an act of charity or a crime that raises health and safety concerns among people who live and work nearby. The city of Houston said it will continue to vigorously pursue violations of its ordinances uh, relating to feeding the homeless, according to a statement released to news outlets. Paul Kobash, lawyer representing Food Not Bombs volunteer uh, Philip Ficon, told KPRC after last week's verdict, the law that the city has passed is absurd. It criminalizes a Samaritan for giving Texas or enforcing laws against helping the homeless, laws against feeding the homeless, as if the homeless aren't people. Texas is trying to codify evil. Let me tell you, this actually is a part of my story, right? Because I work with Foods Not Bombs. In fact, about uh, just before the last, one of the last interviews I did on my three o'clock show, on my noon show at KPFT, was the leader of, one of the leaders of Food Not Bombs. I can't remember his name right now. I interviewed him, but here's the kicker. That woman that you saw on Channel 13 interview, she's a part of our board of directors of the Houston Peace and and Justice Center. Uh, And she, uh, her ticket was dismissed. And as she got home and we were in a meeting together, she says, but they are going to refile it again. So um, like I said, Rodden, this hits close to home. Because, like I said, I our organization, Houston Peace and Justice Center, is actually an ally of uh, Foods Not Bomb. In fact, we do a whole lot of the fundraising for Foods Not Bombs that um, that's out here in Houston. Well, I think it's a national organization, actually. But our chapter here does some very good work. All the food that's given out is vegan food. And they do it next to the library, in the park, next to the library. Why? Because it's a location everybody can find. And our mayor uh, just doesn't get it. And not only our mayor, they just don't get it. If they really wanted to do something about the homeless, they would go ahead and say, okay, what we're going to do is find, a, if you don't want them at the library, we will find a neutral location in the area that we can go ahead and set up for those uh, good do-gooders to come and feed the hungry. But the, the hungry are people too. And not only are they people, but many of them are thrown into the streets because our economic system is fraudulent. But so few people can realize that right now. Uh, Eileen is the woman who was um, uh, who who got a ticket and got it dismissed and was interviewed by uh, at Channel Thirteen. She's on our board of directors. One of our great members of the uh, of the organizations. Okay. We have AVQ says, error submitting reaction, Twitch messing up. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Benlin says, everybody, hello, good evening. Uh, Bruce wants to know where does the First Amendment stop? I don't know, Bruce, but I saw a lot of lawyers talking about that, uh, where they said, if somebody talks about uh, 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 going ahead and rob a bank, and they don't necess- are not necessarily successful in run- robbing a bank, but their words cause the robbing of the bank, well, that's not for that is not protected by freedom of speech, right? So those are the things we look at. Eric says no college education dilemma of selling his business he started in America, twenty one million. I don't know. Uh, you may want to tell us a little bit more about the story, uh, El Senor Eric Hayes. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anyone on Twitch got this? I guess you got a broken page, huh? I haven't seen that, but I'll, I'll, we'll figure that out later. All right, we also have uh, Michael Rodin says, First Amendment stops when speech are criminal actions. Exactly. Yvette Avery Herod is in the house. Hola, Yvette, como estas? Great to see you here, my wonderful union activist that gets results. Uh, Maywood says, I really like Food Not Bombs. Know them quite well. Exactly, Maywood. Uh, Michael says, Egberto, those who work with helping homeless people deserve all the love in the world, but honestly makes me wish our nation prioritized this issue so that there were next to no homeless people at all. Exactly. I agree. Bridge MCP says, hi all. Sorry I missed Saturday. Had to change the, o the OHV cap and well, other tractor crap. Well, you know, we know you're a hard worker, my dear, beautiful lady. Maywood says, make me that no, no, no. Okay. Uh, Michael Rodin says, now we just have to wait for the conservative to mention that one third of all homeless area are, are in California. It won't be long. Well, of course, if California owns about one sixth of the people in the country, what would you expect? But, you know, uh, folks don't do the numbers, right? Uh, Eric Hay says, Daily Coast uh, on Earth. Video, uh, teachers union president rant students. Egberto, this is something to see. Why would teachers be drawn to this? We are just trying to give our kids a place to learn things and life should be guided by the parents, right? Not the schools. Not true. I don't want, I don't want society solely guided by parents because if, if parents are thugs, if parents are the scourge of the earth, they have beautiful children. Should we make the thugs or the scourges of the earth be the ones who mold those children into effective societal beings? I don't think so. You got to think these things through, Brother Hayes. Oh, parent, like your parents know best. An ignorant parent is an ignorant parent. And I could be an ignorant parent. You know why I send my kid to a school? I send my kid to a school because there are a lot of things teachers don't know that I want my kid to know. I don't want to be the purveyor of just what my kids know. I want my kids' view to be expansive. Anybody who, who just sits, parents knows best. No, they don't. But you know what? A, a politician can't go out and say that. That's why I could never be a politician. Do parents know what's best for their kids? Hell no. Hell no. There are some parents who know what's best for their kids. But I will warrant to you that most parents need society to really mold their kids. You know, that, that was a great thing back in Panama where I grew up. We grew up in a society, a community, where just about everybody was your parent. If, a, if another person's parents scolded you, you didn't go home and say, Ma, do you know what uh, Miss Rodriguez told me? And, and, and then your mother ran over to Miss Rodriguez to cuss her out. And That wasn't how it worked in Panama. In our days, at least, if, if another parent scolded you, you kept that quiet because, you know, you were raised by the community and that's how our community was. But now we have all this individualism, this this rugged individualism and rugged individualism is never good for society because you grew up with a bunch of foolish kids, because if they have foolish parents. They will be a reflection of their parents. I want my kids to be a reflection of my good parts, not my bad parts, my good parts, and whatever they learn on the outside, and maybe come home and teach me. Like my daughter has come home and taught me a hell of a lot of stuff that, I, that she would not have known if she depended on me to teach her. So no, Brother Eric, absolutely not. Parents do not know best. Some may know best in certain areas, but they sure as hell don't know best. All right. Yelling fire in a movie theater, not freedom of speech. You get that right. Eric Hayes, Daily Caller is garbage with numerous uh, fail fact checks. Find better sourcing. If, if somebody gives me something with Daily Caller, I ignore it automatically, right? I don't even bother reading it anymore. It could be right. But because of your reputation of who they are, I simply don't read certain racks. Now, I will read Fox News. Fox News has very good news in uh, on online, right? Uh, not only that, the local Fox stations like here in Houston, they're just fine. Fox News, the, the, the propaganda station 
is horrendous. Okay, so you got to know where to get your news from. All right, let's see what else we got here. Carl Cox says, Lindsey Graham is a pile of crap, just like Trump. It never ceases to amaze me how many people vote support the stealing from the bottom 99% to give to the mega rich. And they don't know it. They say, just steal a bit more from me, please. Egberto, yep, I know. But California is working on the homeless issue, though, not nearly as fast. Yeah, but California needs to get rid of even some of our liberals. Notice I didn't say progressive. Liberals that talk a lot of crap about wanting to help the poor or whatever, but they don't want certain things in their neighborhood, right? So let's be frank here. We want a progressive government, a progressive people, but don't, don't, don't sit down and think all these liberals are good people. They're just as bad. They're nothing but uh, uh, people that like to con- maybe conservatives with a conscience. All right. Paul Fleming says he's checking in. Welcome aboard, Paul Fleming. Michael Ron saying, uh, uh, Lee Grant says, hey, all from hot Texas. I know Grant is hot as hell. By the way, Grant was great in, in the meeting that we had on Saturday. In fact, I learned a little something from Grant. I learned a little something from both my liberals and my progressives in this last meeting that we had. I had to learn about certain things about the flu back in the 20s, I think it was. So great, great information all there. Uh, Breach says it takes a village to raise a child. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I was I was raised by great parents and a great village. That's all I can say. I had great parents and I had a great village and I could not have been who I am without both of them. I know there are some people who shook me up that if my parents ever knew that they had to shake me up, then they would shake me up as well. <laughs> anyway, Michael Rodney says, have you seen those parent teacher conferences which were broadcast? There's a lot of ignorant parents out there. Seems that becoming a parent doesn't make you much worse. No. And that's why I said when people say, let the parents decide. Hell no. Parents can some be some of the dumbest ones out there. Egberto, you're wrong. Parents do know what is best for kids. If that are present, it is the freaking absent parents and pol- No, they don't. Saying something doesn't make it so. If a parent is an ignorant racist that raises good, raises their kids and feed them and, and do all the right things by them, if they're racist thugs, if they're homophobic thugs, if they're if they're evangelical uh, evangelical people that don't care about anybody else, they aren't good parents. If they are science deniers, they're not good parents. If they teach their kids how to hate, they're not good parents at all. And you know, guess what? We have a lot of those. What has been great in the school, why a lot of people on the right likes to go against the schools, is that the schools are great. The schools are putting in uh, societal knowledge into the kids. Societal, I hate the word tolerance, but you know what I mean if I use the word tolerance. Societal tolerance into kids. The schools are the places where kids learn that we are more alike than we are different. A lot of crap that, that, that a lot of these parents don't teach their kids. Let me tell you, growing up here, even going, when I came to the United States and going to college, I'll tell you a little, a little secret that I have never said before. I never forgot one of the first girlfriends I had in uh, in in Austin was a young lady from Leander uh, uh, Leander Texas uh, in the Hill Country, and we were you know it was great and we had a great time. We went out together. We you know you know regular date and stuff. And it was Thanksgiving, you know, and everybody was going and 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 those foreigners who had their girlfriends in in um in the states, etc. They would talk about going going with their girlfriends or boyfriends to Thanksgiving. I felt I I kind of felt sorry for my girlfriend because I knew that I wasn't going home, or not going home, going to her home, or uh Thanksgiving. And how was she going to tell me that? Right. But I knew what was coming. So uh, she tried every excuse why it is that, you know, I was going to be there in Austin and, and not there. But that's how she was reared. Right. Is her parents a good, good parents? They don't know it all. She came to the University of Texas and she became a person who respected and honored humanity. But not her parents. Are they great raisers of kids who know best? Hell no, they weren't. They put that young lady through hell. 
Okay, so let me get that right to you folks. No, parents don't necessarily know best at all, at all. All right, Bridge MCP says, if I did something in school, mom would give me more of it. <laughs> I know, Bridge, me too, <laughs> me too. Michael Rodden says, testing one, two, three, restream, but you were working, check it out. Egberto is just one step away from arresting parents for what they uh, what they teach their children at home. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm just wanting their children to be exposed to the right things. Lee Grant, I wish kids wielding a, uh, wielding in New York City this weekend could have had better parents. Guess what, uh, Mr. Lee Grant? I wish so too. But guess what I can guarantee you? All those parents weren't a whole bunch of progressive parents. I guarantee you half of those parents were conservative parents. I guarantee you half of those parents were pe uh, parents who lived on the island. Were well, I won't go into that. That's another story. Maywood says, well, we were run almost exclusively by conservatives and Republicans for the last couple of hundred years. It has only been recently that we woke up. Exactly. We got woke and started voting the Republicans out, but still have a lot more uh, to go. Local governments are still dominated by conservatives. Exactly right. Tom C. says Trump finds it's easy to break many laws until one day a special prosecutor calls. Now he begins to worry about the verdict of a jury that could lock him up for life behind prison walls. The walls and laws. I like that. I like that limerick. Don't forget to keep those things all and post it to your section of our website, my brother Tom C. All right. Maywood says from Michael Rudnick to Eric Daily Callers, garbage with numerous fail fact checks. Find better source. And Eric Hayes says for the people that go around just bringing kids here and not being parents, well, that is sad and disgusting. Yes, it is. Deborah Moyer says the MAGAs are adult toddlers. Exactly. Uh, Michael Rudnin says Fox News, uh, Fox Business has multiple fail fact checks, nearly all of them in regard to presidential politics. Again, you have to, whenever you get news today, you have to fact check it. If you hear me, fact check me. The good thing about what I do is I make sure and fact check myself. So you're not going to get, you're not going to catch me in a whole lot of stuff, right? All right, Maywood, don't need the freaking video doesn't uh, lie. Look at it and listen. Oh, yes, you think the Daily Caller staged that? Actually, listen, the context. I can make a video say things. I am honest with the way I cut videos. I am very honest with the way I cut videos, but you should try things elsewhere. All right. Uh, Michael says, back in the day, if teachers called a parent in to talk about their child, the parent would take the side of the teacher. Now they take the side of the child. And the child, children know it. Replying to Rodney, Michael Rodney, yep. And that is where, uh, and everyone in comes. I don't get that very well. All right, Michael also says, if there are evangelicals who don't follow their book except to pound the cover. I know, this is a Bible. This is a Bible. But they fail to live within it. Uh, Paul Fleming says, I know it's no secret, but in uh, in has to be said, if this was a person of color that caused a ride on the Capitol, he would already be in jail. Of course he would, but not able to go around the country spewing ignorance. True. Uh, Eric says, good parents don't need school to raise their kids. They don't need school to raise their kids. Then they will raise ignorant kids. It's that simple. If I, if I was the sole interpreter of what my daughter learned, my daughter will, would not be the central, uh, complete person that she is. I am happy that my daughter went to Kingwood High School. I am happy that my daughter went to Shadow Forest. I'm happy that my daughter went to Howard. I'm happy that my daughter went to, to uh, uh, the University of Texas. She went to all kinds of schools that framed exactly who she is and was able to communicate with everybody. And that's the issue with evangelicals. They want tunnel vision so that you can be under the control of a few. But it's hard to explain that all together. Paul Fleming says, teachers go to the schools and get an education just like doctors, lawyers, engineers. Why are we diminishing what these people are capable of doing? They are vested in time to your children. Exactly, uh, Brother Fleming. Uh, Michael Rudnin also says, Daniel, public schools would expose children to diversity. And that exposure to diversity usually eliminates fear and hate. Exactly. Lee Grant says, public schools are a great are, are great. If you want to immerse the kids in identity politics and racialized thinking, no, I think the church schools do a very good job of that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I've 
had the best education thanks to my parents being in the military. Children don't spend as many hours with their parents as you may think. Teachers do, their friends do think about it. Exactly. I, that's why I always talk about paying teachers a lot of money. I invest, look, we have the conservatives. They don't care that, they don't care that the super rich, like the stockbrokers that do nothing for them, all these elitists make a whole lot of money, right? But the people that we should be happy to pay that kind of money to, collect the taxes from them and pay that kind of money, the teachers, they complain. Our most valuable assets isn't a piece of stock that we purchase. Our most, our most valuable asset are our kids. You know, I could not think about something more precious to me than my daughter, right? So how dare you want, I want to give a tax break to a stock broker and force a teacher to pay for the supplies in her whole, in her entire classroom where your kids are going to spend a whole lot of your time. The insanity of the right, it's just preponderously ridiculous. Okay. Paul Vermin says, I've had the, no, I read that one already. Michael Renner says, Eric Hayes, if a source has shown to be SHIT, I'm not going to watch anything from them. Why bother listening to known liars? I agree 100%. After a, I don't look, if, if a particular publication makes a mistake, it's understood. However, if a, if, a, if, a, if a system continues to do so, it should be left alone. All right. Paul Fleming says, I don't discount homeschooling. My neighbor's kids, her parents got homeschool and they're very good people. So it's a choice just like anything else. That's why you have parent-teacher conferences. They have curriculum for your child. And look, there are good homeschooling methodologies, right? I know people who do homeschoolings, but guess what else they do? They meet with other families. They go on bus tours. They go on museum tours. They learn about the way the world works. They do a whole lot of things together. But that's not what we're talking about. When Eric just comes and blatantly says, uh, parents know best, in an insular way, that's absolute, and I love you, brother, but it's rubbish. It's absolute rubbish. It's qualifiable, quantifiable rubbish. All right, Michael Ren says, Egberto, if a publication has a long track record of lying, they should be put in the trash. I couldn't have said that any better. Anyway, let's get busy. Today, we need to get started with our interview with Miss, uh, oh, did I get the wrong one? With, uh, with Mira. Uh, Weinstein. I had the wrong one queued up, but here's the interview that we did with Mira Weinstein. Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis. Today we are honored to have Mira Weinstein with us. She is the founder and organizer in chief of Organizing to Win. Uh, anytime I hear organizing or organizing with the word win, that's what it's all about. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Mira, how are you doing today? Good. It's nice to meet you. I'm Mira Weinstein. Oh, I'm sorry. For, I, I, I sorry for saying but, it well, wrong. Me, if you speak Mi Spanish, it's like Mira, yeah. Mira. Mira. Well, hablo español, so it's Mira Weinstein. Okay. All right, Mira. First of all, tell us a little bit about what got you into founding an organization, organizing to win. Well, you know, my whole background is in organizing and political campaigns. And so there was a period where I was looking for my next opportunity, figuring out what I was going to do next. And I was interviewing, I was researching, I was networking, I was meeting with people and um, nothing really fit. It just, it, it just, nothing really seemed to be right. And uh, I had a particularly weird meeting at the end of 2019. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of, you know, weird. And I walked out of that meeting thinking, first of all, I don't want to do that. Second of all, why am I killing myself? What I really want to do is help bring people together to build power. And whether I do that with one organization or whether I do that um, with lots of organizations, it doesn't matter. That's what I want to do. And so that's how organizing to win was born because now, I had this view that I wanted to bring people together to build power. Now, Mira, you worked uh, under, or rather during the Dukakis campaign, uh, you worked on that years ago. 
Um, did that influence and, you know, all that went wrong in that campaign, did that, did that have an influence on you uh, stating maybe we needed to do things a little bit different to reach the people we needed to reach? Because, as you know, uh, Dukakis' loss wasn't really because of what he represented, but because of what others sort of imparted on him to represent. Well, I was 18 at the time. Um, <laughs> okay. it was the, I get I get what she uh, she is young audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that young, but OK. Thanks. Um, well, you know, the first time I knocked on a door was 1988 during mm-hmm. that campaign. Right. And, you know, at the time I thought um, I thought a lot of things. I was the only person in America who thought Michael Dukakis could win. I did. <laughs> OK, well, then two of us thought he could okay. win. Yeah. Um, but I also thought that if we could just elect all the right people, we could solve all our problems. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've noticed, but none of those things happened. True. Um, uh, and so I I started to, I did a lot of different things. You know, I worked with feminist activists at the National Organization for Women on these huge national mobilizations. And I start my my theory of change, so to speak, started to evolve. You know, I worked with union members on building stronger unions. And I worked with gun violence prevention activists. And I worked with teachers and former teachers who were who were fighting for organi- uh, for educational justice in their communities. And my my theory of change started to evolve where I started to think, Yes, we need to elect all the right people. We need to pass the right laws. We need to have the right leaders. But we really need to do more than win. Um, We need to build power. You know, I was talking with one of my sort of formational organizing bosses. She was the first uh, first supervisor I ever had in actual organizing instead of political campaigns. And so I was talking to her about the difference between organizing and mobilizing. Mm -hmm. And she said, she thought about it for a second. She said, organizing is transformational. Where, and and I sort of understood what she meant at that time. So we have to win, right? We have to elect all the right Mm -hmm. people. We have to pass the right laws. We have to have the right leaders in place. And we have to do more than win. With the... Mira, I mean, I love what you just said, because earlier today on my on-air program, KPFT 90.1 FM uh, show, Politics and Right, a caller called in. First of all, uh, an initial caller called in and spoke about those people uh, that simply have given up on voting. And uh, it was specific. He was specific to black men not voting. And, uh, you know, a, a black guy called in and he said, yes, he was talking to me. And yes, I don't see the value in voting anymore because, you know, uh, we don't really get a choice on who to elect. Here's what you've just said to us. You've said, wait a minute, it's not just enough to elect the people, the right people. There is more. And I was trying to explain to the uh, to the young man that there was more. And I think that is what you're alluding to as far as organizing above and beyond the elected is am i am I, did i get that right at all i think so I, I think about political campaigns as mobilizing mm-hmm. you know i have a, a a friend who is a longtime organizer who is really brilliant and he says you have to organize before you can mobilize and so yeah. organizing is this sort of intangible squishy abstract thing in some ways where I think about the definition of organizing is bringing people together to build power. And when those people are together, when we have consensus, when we trust each other, when we have relationships with each other, we can move together to mobilize. Right, right. You know, it's interesting, Mira, because, um, and this is, a, is, this is for the wrong cause, But it's exactly what you're talking about. If you look at the consistency of, let's say, the Trump voter, the ones that he can do no wrong for, there is a strong trust among that group 
as well as trust, even to a person that isn't trustworthy. But they're exhibiting all the things that you would like to see simply, however, on the correct side of values. I think so. It's tough to it's tough to make that shift, right? Hard to put myself in those shoes. I know. And I think that there's something special and different about that group of folks. And, and I haven't quite figured out what it is. It's, you know, I think that there was similar um, following mm -hmm. to Obama. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, I'm an Obama supporter, so I think it's different. Right. Right. So it's hard to to be uh, I'm not sure there is any such thing as objectivity. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to sort of put myself in the shoes of someone who thinks about following Donald Trump the way that many of us follow Obama. Right. right. It's hard to make that equivalency. Um, well, I think you answered that already, though. I mean, if you take a look at narrative, right. The narrative that these guys and, you know, I get Trumpists that call into my program and, you know, I am very respectful in, in the way I deal with them. But one of the things that they have, all of them, they have a narrative and it's a narrative that plays to their culture, a narrative that plays to their beliefs, a narrative that. And, you know, when Obama came into power or, or when Obama started his uh, uh, what, what was the phrase again? Uh, uh you know, we are who we're, we've been looking for and that th those sort of things. It is something that we could hold on to. And it felt real, right? To those people, you know, it feels real. And you're organizing, when you talk about organizing to win, it's generating that narrative, in my opinion, at least, to those, even including those who have a false narrative. How can you bring that to them? You know, I think about this in a couple of ways. It, and it's it, the easiest way to talk about it is in terms of elections, even though elections are really more a mobilization than an organization organizing. But I think that there are elements of organizing that we can bring into traditional politics. And I start to think about this. Um, this is sort of a long winded answer to your question, but it's how I think about it. I started to think about this um, after the 2018 midterms. Mm -hmm. Um, I helped turn uh, one of the, at least one of the Orange County, California districts blue in 2018. And then Orange in the general, County, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, we could talk a long time about that. I also, you know, in 2018, I worked with um, a gun violence prevention organization on a member engagement campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but after that election, I was talking with someone who was also involved in one of those, the flipped districts. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me, you know, we have all these fabulous volunteers who want to keep going, but we don't have anything for them to do. Oh, and I was oh, like, oh, dude, oh, <laughs> there's always yeah. something to do. But it got me to thinking because I thought, you know, in 2018, there were folks who voted for Democratic U.S. House candidates mm -hmm. because they didn't like to see children in cages. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be with us on gun violence. They're not going to be with us on on certain issues. Right. But they didn't like to see kids in cages. And I, I thought to myself, you know, those people are not ours forever. Mm -hmm. But that's because we don't have a relationship with them. Amen. Right? Yes. And if we could apply some kind of relationship building, you know, traditional organizing tactics to these uh, communities, then we may be able to shift them. So I was thinking about that and kind of spinning up the organizing campaign in my mind and talking with another friend of mine, a friend of mine who's been really instrumental in the shift that Orange County has made. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him about this and he said, well, that's right. And there are also folks that we're not talking to and that's why they're not involved. And so I was thinking about that as you were telling the story of the caller, because there's also a community of people that, that we're just not talking to. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and because they don't vote because we don't have a relationship with them. Right. So why should they, there's been a 50 year campaign to convince 
a whole, many, many communities of people that politics is just not about you. Oh, don't worry about it. Politics isn't about you. And we're not talking to them, right? So why should they vote? Of course, they're not going to engage with us because we're not talking to them. And so it's these two communities of voters or potential voters that we're not talking to, that we have no relationship with, right? And that's the basis of organizing is when you build a relationship, you can move into action together. And we don't have relationships with these folks. So I've, you know, there's a, the whole, I think there's a whole lot of things we can do to move some of the tactics of traditional organizing to communicate and engage with you know, these two different kinds of communities broadly defined. You know, Mira, that actually is not a long winded answer. That was the perfect answer. And, uh, and the reason why is the, the, the way you ended the magical portion is we don't have a relationship with them, with those, with that young woman uh, who told you, I have all these people with nothing to do. They have a lot to do building mm-hmm. relationships. And there's an interesting thing because I'm in Kingwood, a very red district, uh, probably much redder than what Orange County used to be. And uh, it turns out here in Texas that if we take a look at how the, 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 the mixture of the church and the social organizations get together to nurture these uh, people to the right, to nurture them with things that are not really in their best interest, but they feel the love, you know, they feel the love. So right. they follow the love. So I think you nailed it. And with organizations like yours, uh, understanding that, because what we have, in my opinion, and you tell me if you, you think I'm wrong or not, is we have a lot of, and people don't like when I say this, but we have a lot of elit- elitist organizations in Washington that seem to believe they know how to talk to somebody in Idaho or Orange County or or Harris County in the redder areas, et cetera. But they don't. But those are who get paid uh, to, to come with the analysis. And then a Mira Weinstein uh, is trying to build funds for organizing to win, have to go scratch to be able to do what she just proved needs to be done. So, well, you know, let's be clear. I'm not the only one who has this brilliant no, idea. No, 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 no. I understand. I, I, and I, I wasn't trying to imply that. I'm trying to say I know a lot of organizations like yours that are doing the, the necessary work. To go out there and and do exactly what you said, right? But again, they need the recognition, they need the funding, they need all all these types of actions to get truly get moving. Yeah, Mira, uh, look, give me a closer. Tell me what I should have asked you that I didn't. Tell me something that you wanted us to cover more in detail. Let's close this baby out. I think we can't be afraid to talk about power. You know, power is neutral. And sometimes we get hung up or intimidated out of talking about power. Yet power is the ability to act. And if what we want to do is build inclusive, equitable communities, we need to talk about power. Not power over, but power with. And so that the, the meaning of organizing is bringing people together to build power together, right? And the key words being people together in power. Um, and so I think that if we could, if we have that opinion or that perspective on power, we're not afraid to build it because it's power with, not power over. Mira Weinstein, founder and organizer of Organizing to Win. Thank you so kindly for having been on Politics and Right. Please keep up that great work that you're doing. Well, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was a, a great opportunity to talk about the things I love most. We, all right, folks, I hope you, you enjoyed that. And there is, there is the Flintstone cart as per the one and only Bridge MCP. <laughs> that is funny. I remember I used to be hooked on uh, the Flintstones. Uh, 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 
they it used to be called something piedras i never i've never watched the flintstone in english i've only watched the flintstones in spanish and it used to be called uh something piedras i don't remember what it was piedras means stones uh ay, ay, ay. but it, it was so funny in spanish i can imagine how it would have been in english but i never actually watched it in english Anyhow, let's see what else we got here. By the way, I want to—I just want to give some kudos to our posse here, the PDR posse, because you know, and and you know, even in our in our uh, uh, pica piedra, ay ay ay, los pica piedras. I love you, Rodney. You can find everything all the times, man. That's great, los pica piedras. Okay, but anyhow, um, here is the thing. This is important. We had a great. Uh, discussion, great discussions in our Ask Egberto Anything on Saturday. And interestingly, we only had six people this time. I want this stuff to grow to 30, 40 people, but we only had six people. Now, here's the thing. There were three conservatives and three progressives. And we didn't agree necessarily, but we had substantive discussions. And um, you know, there are times that I got corrected by Lee Grant and I told him about, hey, man, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I remember uh, not forgetting about uh, a, a pandemic previous to uh, to our current stuff that he reminded me of. And it's like, oh, God, I forgot about that. And and within the conversations, we all exchange. Right. I'm looking at our stuff right here and I'm noticing that May Wood comes and he tells Eric Hayes, hey, you were actually right, Eric, about that. I didn't realize that this particular person was appointed by Obama and not a conservative or something like that. The reason I'm, I'm bringing that up and the reason that warms the heart is I want us to get back to the position where it is okay for us to have screwed up on something, be corrected by somebody else, whether they are of your 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 uh, ideology or not, and simply say, hey, thanks, man. I didn't realize that. I forgot about that, or I learned something new. That is how, because like I said, most of us understand, most of us want the same things like I say all of the time, right? A lot of folks don't want to quite accept that, but that is the truth. And when I see these kind of a commentaries, it makes me feel good. Uh, it, it really tells me that we are doing something right. Here we can have a community, our online community right now that listens to the live version of Politics Done Right. And we can, you know, uh, we can we can pull each other's strain and do all these things, but know that we are this one community. All right, let's go ahead and listen to Brother Lindsay. Lindsay Graham did some interesting work over, I think it was over the weekend, but check it out. Well, Lindsey Graham continued to make a fool of himself. You won't believe what he said at a conservative, a Republican uh, event. This is astounding. Check this out, then we'll take it on the other side. Here's the person at the head of the, oh, the class Lord. for humiliating themselves. Somebody who said after January 6th, he'd had enough. Uh, and then got intimidated and actually groveled anymore. Lindsey Graham, this is Lindsey wow. at a Republican Party dinner Saturday in his home state. People ask, what happened with you and Trump? I said, well, he beat me like a drum, and I acknowledged that he did. He sort of liked hearing that, but we found something in common. I've come to, to like him, and uh, he likes him, and that gets us through 18 holes of God. One thing I can tell you, you better not screw with this guy or you regret it. I, I just, um, Jonathan Lemire, I just, I, I gotta say, I just, I don't know how you'd do that. I, I just it's not never, in me. No. I never was. I don't think it's in most people. I don't, I guess you the question I keep joking? asking is what's worth that? And I can tell you having a congressional pen is not. In fact, I don't think anything's worth humiliating yourself the way Lindsey does. But I mean, we can expand this out again. Donald Trump threatened a federal prosecutor saying, I'm coming after you, calling him deranged on stage, uh, uh, no doubt knowing that this was going to amp up the number of death threats that Jack Smith had. 
And yet Republicans in the House and the Senate sit meekly by, quietly by, and, 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 and continue to act like this is normal. One has to ask the question, what does Donald Trump have on Lindsey Graham? What does Donald Trump have on a lot of these politicians? It can't be just about being elected. After all, Lindsey still has some more time on his contract, if you will. Um, There must be something that President Trump has on key Republicans that's holding the reins and that's allowing others to follow because they don't know exactly what he has on them. And you know what? I know, I know, I definitely don't know this for a fact, but you've got to ask yourself the question. Will, who allows themselves with that stature, the stature of a senator of the United States, to be so uh, ridiculed, to be so taken advantage of? Who allows that into their reality? Who allows that into their reality? Now, let me tell you something, my dear brother Lado. Lado says, it's hard to reach out to people you hate. The hate for evangelicals is strong on PDR. Let me make a correction. I can't hate evangelicals. My sister, who I love dearly, I love to death. I will defend her to the death. I have other friends right here in Houston. Devote evangelicals. My goddaughter, devote evangelical, someone who even loves, uh, what's the name of the, uh, 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 God, I can't remember her name. Uh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't hate them at all. I do not hate them at all. Now, I want to hold the, the pastors who've screwed with their minds. I'd like to hold them accountable because everything that they preach is anti what Jesus really stood for. And you see, I have the, uh, the right to speak about that because I was, a born, I was born a Catholic, con, uh, converted to a, Christ, a, a, a Baptist Christian converted to one of the most uh, the, the most bible riveting groups maranatha for a few months while i was in college and it's only after i really studied the bible in detail that i decided it wasn't for me it's for a lot of people it wasn't for me right um i was a humanist and i couldn't uh, i i couldn't abide by some of the things that i don't won't go into that right now so no 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 i definitely don't hate evangelicals what I do know is that today's evangelicals do not live up to the spirit of Jesus Christ. That their, their worship of capital, their worship of money, their hate for the indigent, their unsupport, uh, their hate for women in general. And when I say hate for women in general, that's exactly what I mean. That is exactly what I mean. And I, I, I don't say that facetiously. If, 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 your, if, your, if your ideology supersedes the life of a woman that says something so my thing is never to hate the evangelicals or anybody else but to actually seek to break bread and change minds okay michael ronin says jesus core messages were heal the sick feed the poor welcome the immigrant and refugee love your neighbor when evangelicals live up to jesus's core messages then that feeling will go away. And that's true. You just have to, I mean, you just have to be like the Jesuits are, right? Like the, the current Pope, right? Now, he has some issues still with LGBTQ stuff, but even that he's moderating himself on right now. So yes, it's important. It is important. And I'm glad you brought that up, Senor. I, I'm glad you brought that up. But let's be frank. Let's be honest here. Evangelicals, uh, who profess to be Christians are not living Christian lives. They're not following the Christian tenets. They are some of the most hateful people there are. Just go 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 to an abortion clinic. I tell you what would have been. Uh, let's say you don't uh, don't like abortion, and you go to an abortion clinic where where a lot of women are marching in. If you had that that soul, and and I've done a lot of videos at the abortion clinics here in in uh in houston to see the vial that comes across those people right but just think about how it would be if you said ma'am i, I i'm sorry that you're going through this 
help the person go through it, and then talk about how can I make your life better so that this uh, you won't have to go through this trauma again. But that's not what they do. They don't say, let's support policies so that a family can be sufficiently economically viable that they don't need to ever consider aborting a, a fetus. You know, they don't do things like that. They, they don't want to have the tax breaks for the families or the, the, in, the, the, the general income for the, uh, the underpaid folks so that they can live. But at the same time, they want to enforce their rules on them, right? I have a friend who is adapting uh, Republican orthodoxy right now. She is adapting Republican orthodoxy. This particular young lady. All her kids are on government assistance for uh, for schooling. All her kids are on government assistance for feeding, government assistance for health care. But she she loves she loves the evangelical mantra, not realizing that they don't stand for anything she believes in. Right? Uh, let's see. So called homeschool, no thanks. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Lindsey Graham will. Say whatever is necessary to make more money. True. But I think Trump has something on Lindsay. Daniel says, I am not racist. I have black friends. Right, Egberto? Daniel, you are not a racist at all. I don't really think you're a racist, even though you say some very racist crap. And I think a lot of times you do it because you think you're going to get a, get a jive out of me. But you see, that the problem is I do know you, right? I actually do know you. And I know that a lot of this stuff that you do, I know why you do it. Uh, okay, Paul Fleming says, the judge in D.C. is not afraid of putting Trump in jail. If he can't control himself, stay tuned. I hope he throws butt in jail. Bridge MCP says, after today, Rump signed the agreement to shut up. Uh, Robert Davenport says, pity the fools. They're not worth anyone's hate. Hey, you remember you remember that, uh, Davenport? The pity the fools. That was uh, Mr. T, right? Uh, yeah, Mr. T. Anyway, Michael Rudden says, Eric Hayes. Yep, about that, Trump both over overall and overvaluing his properties for financial gain uh, were crimes that the New York uh, uh, AG, Attorney General, might prosecute soon, which it should. Paul Fleming says, just tell the evangelicals that Jesus is a person of color, then you'll see how much really you care about Jesus, which they <laughs> just based upon how they cheat their neighbors of different colors. Oh, boy, that's funny. All right. But he says, Michael Rudden and Eric Hayes, yep, about that Trump both overvaluing and undervaluing his properties. The financial gains were crimes that the New York agency will prosecute. Yes, they will. Are, are you shaming him for, for his sexuality? It's, it's what Lee Grant's asking. No, I'm not shaming him for his sexuality. In fact, if Lindsey Graham were to come out and say, I am gay, I mean, I, I think he would, <laughs> to put it bluntly, I think he'd get more votes around the country for, for president. Because the final is, oh, you're human. All right. Evangelicals love money, wealth. They believe that God loves the wealthy, mega rich, etc. Well, you know, there's this stuff called the prosperity gospels, right? Eric Hayes replying to British MCP, just bring more, I will read it, uh, just bring to the point who's concerned. I mean, really, this is political versus rule of law. Not true. Tom C. says, have C. Washington Post 824. Uh, one of two. The average doctor in the U.S. makes 350000 a year. U.S. physicians are making about 50% more than German doctors and about more than twice as much as U.K. doctors. Uh, Egberto, check before posting on the screen. This one might be too harsh to show. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out uh, before I copy it to the, to the screen. Let me take this, that off the screen for starters, and I'll put it on and see what it says. Are you going to get me in trouble, Mr. Mr. Rudnan? The teachings of Jesus, feed only those that look like us and pass the drug test. Give your money to those who are wealthy. Uh, the rich and the powerful shall inherit the earth. Do not kill unless they really deserve it. Do not, do not. No, 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 no. Uh, the teachings of the Republican. Actually, I don't think that's a, uh, uh, and, and my Republican friends, this is not for the ones who are truly Christians. These are the ones that are for play Christians. I wish that's what the, the topic had said, play Christians. That's what this one is for. Uh, uh, Johnson says, B. Johnson says, awesome interview. Thank you so kindly. The second one of two for Tom C. says, the United States has fewer doctors per person than 27 out of 31 member countries tracked by the OECD. 
and 31 out of 31 with the fewest primary care physicians, generalists, 3.1 per 10,000 residents. It, it, it's a shame, but we understand why. We absolutely understand why. Uh, Daniel Lado says, uh, Robert Davenport, thank you so kindly for your support. He says, power to progressives. We are the true patriots. You've got that right. We are the true patriots. We are the ones that support everybody else. Thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you so kindly, Robert Davenport. Some, who's going to follow Davenport and give us a super chat? Thank you, Davenport. Daniel Lado says, all people hate. Egberto, tell us five days a week who and what conservatives hate. It's a lot. I wonder if Egberto can list off some of the people and groups of progressives hate. Yes, I could. Do you want me to? They hate hating conservatives. The, uh, progressives hate conservatives who hate. Progressives hate people who hate, people who harm, people who do bad things. That's who they hate. Now, I am a different type of progressive. I hate no one. And I've had to teach myself after I see those who hate not to hate. It's a learning proposition, something that you have to work hard to learn. All right. I'm running out of time here. I'm running out of time. Uh, Eric Hayes says, Bad Orange Guy could be out of shot. Brief says, Michael Rundin, Eric Hayes, hate has been around since forever. Hate becomes socially acceptable in some segments of our politics. True. Lee Grant says, progressives are judgmental. Yes, they are. They are judgmental. I won't argue with that. Why is it? But also are conservatives. But we'll go into that in a different day. Anyway, guys, I got to get out of here. Uh, it's 359, 359. I want to thank all of you guys for being here at Politics Done Right. I couldn't do this stuff without you guys. You guys are wonderful. Let me just tell you straight up. Both my conservatives and my, and today we have a good balance. My conservatives and my progressives are great, great, great people. Now, let me tell you something, though. We're going to continue this journey of understanding, all right? Please remember to support our program. How can you support us? You can support us by going to support at uh, by going to politicsdoneright.com slash support. There is the link. Politicsdoneright.com slash support. Or you can give a super chat like our brother Dave uh, Davenport has just done. But we cannot continue doing this without your wonderful and great support. Politicsdoneright.com slash support has all the different ways in which you can support this project. This is a project designed not only to give you two live shows a day, but also to write blogs, videos, uh, books, all the works to move the progressive message forward. We cannot do this unless it is funded by you. And you guys have been great. Uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot tell you how great you are. Please support the program. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.